Hello. This lecture will cover pages 127 through 130 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on combinational logic circuits, part G, the TTL family. Um, before we start, um, I want to go over um, page 127 again. I want you to look over the construction of logic circuits. The inverter, the inverter truth table, and the inverter circuit. And I want, to, want you to go over this table. Make sure you understand each row in this table before you proceed through this lecture. On page 128, remember there are uh, six of those inverters in a 7404 or a 5404 package. I'm going to explain the difference between the 74 and the 54 right now. These both are inverters. They're both hex inverter packages. But when you see a 74 in front of the, as, as a uh, prefix, it's commercial grade and it's encased in plastic. 74 is encased in plastic and it's free air ambient temperature range, operating temperature range is from 0 degrees C to 70 degrees C. That's for commercial products. If you're uh, designing with military grade in mind, it's a 54 prefix. And it's encased in ceramic. 54 means it's cased in ceramic, and its free ambient operating temperature is minus 55 degrees C to plus 125 degrees C. Depends upon your application. Obviously, these are the 5400 series are a little more. Not much, but you know. Your application calls for commercial grade with this temperature range, you use a 74. If it calls for military grade, 54, you, with this temperature range, you use, you use the military grade. The actual TTL integrated circuit, though, the, the actual inverter isn't one transistor. You could take a look um, at uh, your textbook, and you'll see the actual TTL inverter circuit. It, it's made up of a lot more transistors than just one. It's made up of one, two, three, four transistors. Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. The, the, the input stage, notice it has, there's one emitter on this transistor. It's turned sideways, and that's your input. Notice on the output, you have one output. So the inverter has one input and has one output. This input circuit is called emitter input. And if you have a two input circuit, you have two inputs, two emitters here. If you have three input gate, you have three emitters here. You'll see that in a minute. It's called a multiple emitter input. And all the circuits are identical on the input. All the integrated TTL circuits are identical on the input. On the output, you have what they call a totem pull output. Totem pull because you have a resistor on top of a transistor, on top of a diode, on top of another transistor. All the TTL output integrated circuits, logic circuits, gates, all have the same look on the output. It's for consistency when you drive from one circuit to the another. So what I'm saying is, I don't care if it's an OR gate, an AND gate, an inverter, um, the inputs all look the same except for multiple emitter and the outputs all look the same. Where the circuit's operational logic takes place is in the center transistor or transistors. Since this is an inverter circuit, there's only one transistor. If it was an AND gate or a NAND gate or an OR gate or a NOR gate or exclusive OR, you'd have more transistors involved on this center section right here. Now, keep in mind, the last thing I want to mention here is that before I go on is why do they do this? Because as you have, if you have one circuit, let's say a NAND gate and that NAND gate is going to drive let's say it's going to drive an OR gate up here on one input and it's also going to come down here and it's going to drive an inverter and this inverter is going to go out here and it's going to drive one input of an AND gate these output circuits whether you're talking the output circuit here or the output circuit here or the output circuit there or the output circuit there they all look like this on the output exactly like that matter of fact and these inputs, whether you're talking about the inputs there, or the input here, or the input here, or the input here, they all look like multiple emitter, either single, or single emitter or multiple emitter. They all have a resistor with a transistor with a diode. They all have this input for consistency.
you can take a look in your textbook at a uh, the inverter circuit. You'll see this um, depending on what version again you have. This is um, page 165 of this textbook. But if you take a look, that's that inverter circuit. It's a TTL inverter. It's exactly what I had on page number 128. On page 129, the TTL family is comprised of many different types of IC chips. We'll mention a few of them here. The TTL series, the prefix associated with it, and I give you an example here. The example I use is an example of a of the 7404 of the hex inverter. This could be a 7400, it could be a 7432, it could be the the exclusive or 7486 chip, but standard TTL is 7400 series and this is what it looks like in the nomenclature 7404, 5404 whether you want commercial grade or military grade. Um, they make these chips a little faster with shocky transistors and they call it a 74S series all within the TTL family, 74SO4, 54SO4. If, if you're using portable devices, you might want low power. These, these are use not a significant amount of power, but they use more power than the low power devices. If you want low power and you want high speed, you get a 74LS. It's called low power shot key, a 74LSO4, now, or a 54LSO4. Um, this is what we have a lot of these in lab. We use these in lab a lot. The advanced shot key, advanced high speed is called AS, 74 AS series. And the advanced low power shot key, the 74 ALS. Now, keep in mind as you, as you use these devices, the difference between these devices on the pinouts are identical. Their electrical specifications are different, which we get into in the next lecture. So you have to be familiar with what family. Are you using uh, standard 74? Are you using 74LS? Are you using 74AS? Are you using a 74ALS series within the family? Th there's other families. There's CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductor. They're a 40 prefix. There's ECHO, emitter coupled, lo coupled logic. There's PMOS, positive complementary metal oxide semiconductor. There's NMOS. Um, th these MOS families are what most of the microprocessor chips and high yield integrated circuits use because they, they use very very low power. That's the advantage of complementary metal oxide semiconductor. They, they use less power than the than the LS devices up above here in the in the standard TTL family. When you're working with these families down here though, you have to be very, very careful with electrostatic discharge coming from your body. Um, if you have any, you know, who hasn't shocked somebody w walking on carpet and picking up an electrostatic charge, but in some cases you don't even know you have the charge on you. And you touch one of these chips and you end up destroying the chip because the 8,000 volts that you pick up, very very low current but that 8000 volts that you pick up on electrostatic discharge that'll kill these chips instantly um, you have to be careful when you're handling um, memory if you get RAM putting in your computers you want to upgrade from 4 gig to 8 gig or 8 gig to 16 gig or whatever you have to be careful handling those devices they're made out of CMOS or PMOS or NMOS and you have to be they they will they're very sensitive to electrostatic discharge and I thought this was a bunch of BS but I'll I'll tell you in lab experience I had multiple times in industry where people on the line were inserting microprocessor chips into motherboards as they came down the conveyor belt and the lady took off her wrist strap which was grounding her because it was uncomfortable and it took us a while but we figured out that every 10 times when she's sliding back and forth on her chair she was picking up enough of electrostatic discharge to destroy a microprocessor chip that was being used in the keyless entry that we were 
that we were manufacturing for Ford back in 1982. Therefore, at final inspection, final testing, we were dropping out about 10%. 10% of the units were dying. We couldn't find out why. Because one out of every 10 microprocessor chips turned out to be bad because Ethel, that was her name, Ethel, she was, uh, she was unknowingly blowing up microprocessor chips with electrostatic discharge. This is very real. If, if you notice, we, we're even, these aren't acceptable. They are, the TTL family isn't acceptable to electrostatic discharge. But we're still careful with it. Uh, that black foam that these chips plug into in your lab, that's not insulatory. That's, that's, a, that's a conductive foam. That's a conductive foam that keeps all the pins at an equal potential. Equal potential. So you can't have a difference in voltage from one pin to another pin. And that concludes the lecture.